I, I'm going to read a couple of things. You can, you can turn there if you like, but we're going to go to um, John 15 first, and then we're going to go to John 17. I honestly read this this week, and it's like I read it for the first time. Uh, I've read it before lots of times, but I actually got changed by it. Something shifted in my mind and in my heart when I saw this. And it was, maybe you, maybe you know this, but in John 15, I mean, this whole thing is awesome. It's all in red and it's just the words of Jesus and it's, it's so good. And I feel like maybe there's just so many words that I just skipped over stuff. Like you see something good and then you miss something else good while you're reading it. And it's like the Lord just opened my eyes to see this in verse nine. As the father has loved me, so I have loved you. Now remain in my love. All right. As the father has loved me. This is an easy one because we've all heard Jesus loves you. Right. We're going to come back to this, though, that remain in my love idea. Over here in John 17, this is towards the end of his prayer. In verse 23, I'll start at 22. He says, I have given them the glory that you gave me, that they may be one as we are one. That's that unity. I in them and you in me. May they be brought into complete unity to let the world know that you sent me and have loved them even as you love me. Whoa! Whoa! God the Father loves me like he loves Jesus. Like you to tell me that six years ago, I would have called you a heretic. If you told me that the love that the Father has for me is the same burning hot passion that he has for himself, <laughs> I would have told you you're wrong. Like, whoa, yes, God loves us. But there is, I mean, there's a Trinity and there's a self-sufficient all and like it's, they're, they're, they're self-sufficient within their, you know, triune affection for one another and blah, blah, blah. You know, it's, it absolutely caught me off guard that it said, I want them to know that you have loved them even as you have loved me. That revelation hit my heart in a special way this week. God loves us. The Father loves us as he loves the Son. And then and just right here after that, right here after that in verse 26, <clears throat> he says, I have made you known to them and will continue to make you known in order that the love you have for me may be in them and that I myself may be in them. This, what he is asking, that the love you have for me may be in them. Jesus is praying that the love that God has for Jesus would be put on the inside of us that we would carry a love for Jesus that is as burning, committed, passionate, zealous, and holy as what the Father has for him. This is not, you can read it. Read it. That, to, I'm not talking, it's, it's not saying the apostles, it's not saying, Lord, I pray that the apostles would would love me like you've loved me. Jesus is praying for us. He's praying for us that God would put his love, the Father's love for Jesus in us. Gee, Lord, I need to carry that. I need to carry an uncompromising love for you that burns with zeal and passion and commitment to you, God. Listen, 
are you, is this making sense? This is a parent. I don't know. I don't feel like I'm actually speaking on this with like great authority because the revelation to me is like so fresh still that like, I actually, I actually don't understand. I don't understand, but I believe it. I read it and I'm seeing it and I'm asking God, please let this hit my heart that yes, it was easy for me to get Jesus loves me, you know, you know, like the father loves me. And then I get this revelation that like God actually is the father is loving me. Like, like Jesus loved me. And I'm like, well, wait a second. That's the demonstration of love by laying down your own life. And then God, like Jesus himself is praying that he, that the father would put his love for Jesus in us because that is the first commandment. Jesus is praying for us that we might be able to walk out the first commandment to love the Lord, our God with our heart, soul, mind, and strength. And when we stand before him, when we stand before him on the last day, all of the other measurements of our life will honestly be inconsequential. It will all be our yieldedness and surrender. We are only, we are only as useful to God as we are surrendered.